thank you so much for coming. For those of you who just joined, uh, I'll just reiterate that if you feel comfortable doing so, we'd love to see your face. If you can turn on your camera and your microphone, we're gonna have an interactive session and, and get into breakout rooms and all of that. So we'll be um, talking to each other and, and working on some poems. So um, if you do feel comfortable, um, we'd love to, to see you. All right, so uh, to get started, I'd just like to say thank you so much for coming. So this is a um, haiku workshop. And just from a show of hands, if you feel like you can use the raise hand function, how many of you have used um, or have played with haiku before? Cool. Stephen, do you know if they can um, raise their hand function if they don't have their video on? They should be able to uh, okay. still use reactions, yes. Okay, cool. All right, and for those, I'm sure everyone's used to Zoom these days, but um, just a reminder that I like to keep everyone in the gallery mode so that if we do have our cameras on, you can see everyone and we can all interact with each other. So if you'd like, um, switch to gallery mode. And I'm going to actually share my screen with you now so we can get started and kick this off. So let's jump into that. Okay, great. So this is about writing haiku and it seems like a good chunk of you have experience with that in the past, which is awesome. I'm excited to hear that. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about six simple steps. So this is just a brief, brief outline of how the workshop will go. And uh, we'll flow through these steps and then uh, we'll have some time to write and play with some of our writing. And then I'll close out the workshop with a short reading. So um, these are the six steps that we'll go through. But before we do that, I like to start all of my sessions with just a little bit of presencing. Uh, haiku is especially, it's a very rich tradition um, centered around nature and the present moment. And so we wanna just kind of get grounded, get present with each other on the call today. And so I'm going to put you into breakout rooms and I'd like you to chat with each other about what is something in your environment that is keeping you grounded or bringing you joy. So try to be as specific as possible. Um, and I'm gonna give you just a couple minutes to chat with each other about what is bringing you joy or keeping you grounded. So you'll need to have your microphones on for that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put you into breakout rooms now. Okay, and you should see a screen, a little window will pop up. And I will go ahead. All right, go ahead and accept that invitation when it pops up on your screen. Kathy, are you, are you there? Maurice, if you'd like, you're more than welcome to participate as well.
Maurice, is that you? Oh, Kathy, is that you? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. <clears throat> Hi. Are you yeah. comf are you comfortable uh, with yeah, your, your okay. microphone? I'm, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just more of an observer. Oh, okay. But that is, oh, it's okay. I can deal with it. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't want yeah, you. Yeah, if you... No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Only if you're comfortable. Yeah, um, no, it's okay. Okay. It's fine. So the question was, what's something that's bringing you joy or keeping you grounded right now? Do you art, are, art, art. art? Are you a writer? Are you an artist? I'm an artist. What kind of art do you uh, do? Painting, uh, ceramics, uh, primarily painting. I'm working on a uh, commission piece now. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, in, in nature, you know, just observing nature in the neighborhood and wherever I am so wow, and, music, and, and music it all keeps me grounded very good yeah I found that the creative process during the pandemic was definitely something that helped me get through absolutely is so what is the piece that you're working on now that you commissioned for <laughs> oh it's great it's sunflowers so it's all bright and shiny <laughs> Oh, excellent. But I didn't realize what a challenge it was going to be. There's lots of petals and there's about five sunflowers and there's shading and sometimes they go this way and they go that way. And it's like, I think it would be easier to do a horse because that's one item instead of all of these sunflowers with all of these petals. Yeah. So it's fun. It's a challenge and I listen to good music and uh, so it's, it's all good. Cool. Well, I would love to see your work sometime and maybe you can write a haiku about the sunflowers today. Okay. <laughs> uh, of course, feel free to, if you need a break from the sunflowers, feel free to about, write about something else. But <laughs> I'll give that some consideration. That would be another avenue for me. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for, for coming to the workshop today. I just closed the breakout room, so everyone's going to be um, coming back into the- to Okay, the my name is up there twice. I don't know what I did. I'm not real good at this Zoom thing, so. Oh, that's okay. I I'm, figured- I'm, just, I'm one person. <laughs> I, I figured with the spelling being the same, I, I figured it was the same person, but thank you for letting me know. Sure. Yeah. Okay, here everyone comes back into the room. Okay, welcome back. What did you guys discover in, you can unmute yourselves for a moment and we can have a bit of a chat. Um, is there anything that was interesting or surprising that came out of the conversations that was like, ah, oh, that's something I can add to my list to be joyful about or grounded? Annie and I were similar in kind of what we look at our windows is giving us joy. And, and we're both from New York and not living in New York now. Very good. I used to live in New York, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, the weather here is a lot better. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to share my screen again, and we'll dive into these six steps now that we're kind of present and we've gotten, gotten to know each other a little bit. Um, so the first thing that I always like to tell folks who come to my haiku workshops is, you can forget about that old 575 rule. That's like what so many of us learn growing up. It's that 575, count our syllables, five in the first line, seven in the middle, five on the last line. I say, toss that out the window. There's a lot of other writers who feel the same way. So this isn't revolutionary by any means, but um, there are a lot of rules we should be following right now. And this is not one of them. So. Um, we are going to abandon the 575 rule and we're going to um, do things a little bit differently. So uh, the reason for that has a lot to do with the way that haiku was originally translated. Um, the English syllables in the Japanese syllables are very different and so um, when we first started translating haiku from the Japanese we tried to keep a lot of that same structure by also focusing on on um, syllables but if you look at this word here on the screen tanka which is a japanese word i think for price or cost something like that 
Um, this in Japanese has three sound units, whereas in English, it only has two syllables. And so when we use the 575 rule, our haikus are actually much more clunky than they need to be. Um, we end up putting in an extra articles or pronouns or things like that that we don't need in there. And so we really want to simplify. And so we're going to do that today. And um, this is the reason why, um, you know, a lot of folks say uh, away with the 575 rule. So just to give you a little bit of background on that. All right. So here are those six rules again, and uh, we're just going to go over them briefly. Um, we're going to avoid capital letters, and we're going to read some haiku on the next screen so you can see all of this in action. But um, most of so even though we're not counting the syllables, we will still take a look at the structure. So the short, long, short, when we have those three lines of haiku, usually, not always, but usually the first line and the third line are the shortest lines and that middle line is longer, okay? So um, that's the general structure that we're going to follow. So it's still gonna look similar to those haikus that follow the 575 rule, but we just won't be counting syllables. Uh, we're gonna avoid capital letters as well. And we always wanna keep it in the present tense. So as we've been um, doing since the workshop started and getting into the present moment, talking about what keeps us grounded and joyful, all these things, we wanna really focus in on the present tense. Haiku is just so um, focused on nature and the present moment. So we are going to use the present tense. Um, I'd encourage you to use elements of nature as well in your haiku. So we're gonna focus in on something in our environment that we can write about perhaps. Also, no need to rhyme. So no rhyme, no problem. Let's not focus on rhyming either. Haiku generally doesn't rhyme. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, and so I'm gonna share the next screen which uh, has some examples. And we're, this you'll see how um, we avoid complete sentences and what the short, long, short structure looks like. So here we go. All right, so these are a few different examples of some haikus. And so normally you're going to uh, combine a fragments, right? You're, you don't want your whole fragments and phrases. You don't want your whole haiku to read as one sentence. So um, if there's, I'll read a couple. If anyone else wants to read out loud, feel free to raise your hand. Um, I see we have a new person who joined. Hi, Marcy, welcome. Uh, so the first is by Jane Reichold, who is a great haiku writer. And um, actually, I'm gonna share with you one of her resources at the end of this workshop. But, um, Jane Reichold is, um, well, this is one of hers. So rain gusts, the electricity goes on and off. So simple, so beautiful. So we see rain gusts is its own phrase. Then we have the electricity goes on and off is the second. So when you're writing your haiku, it doesn't have to be that the first line stands on its own. You just need the one combination to go together and the other combination to not. So this could be the electricity goes on and off, rain gusts, right? It doesn't have to follow this exact order, but you just want one line to stand on its own and the second two to flow together. So the whole thing will not read like a complete sentence. Any volunteers out there to read one of these other ones? I'll, I'll volunteer to, um, this is Annie, I'll volunteer to read yours. I didn't look at um, the, you know, the writers, the creators, the author, and then I read yours without knowing who wrote it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so impactful for me. And oh, then thank you. 
Thank so. you. Well, yes, please do read it. Thank you for okay. volunteering. Morning dew, a clear night's only sign of grieving. Thank you, Annie. I, uh, that, I was always so curious about dew on the ground, especially because it happens after a hot day and it's something about the um, water in the air and the heat of the atmosphere and then there ends up being this dew on the ground. And so that's what got me thinking about, about this one. Thank you so much, Annie, for reading. Is there any other volunteers to read another one? Okay, I'll read one for you. Awesome, thanks, uh, Jamie. Yeah, no problem. Um, the the, the mats, Matsua Basho? Basho, Basho was a very, very famous Japanese. He like invented haiku, basically. One of the first ones. So okay. um, Basho is a great choice. Okay, good. It's so rotten, no other dogs enjoy old jokes with me. Thank you so much for reading. Okay, so um, if I'm gonna, on this one, I'm gonna have you read it as the second two lines flow more together. Okay, yeah, because I was gonna say, I don't know how to read these. <laughs> no, you did great, you did great. Okay. So I just wanna emphasize the fact that one of the two lines will flow together and the third will not. So go ahead and you'll see the difference. Okay, so do the, the second two together or the first two together? The second two. Okay. It's so rotten. No other dogs enjoy old jokes with me. So you see how those second two lines kind of were, they were its own kind of phrase or, or fragment. And then that first one just was on by itself. So this is the idea that we don't want the whole thing to read as a complete sentence. We want it to have two parts. So one part will kind of stand on its own. It won't flow into the second and the other two lines will kind of flow together. So we have another example of this unknown author. So they did it the reverse way. So the first two flow together and the second stand, the last line stands on its own. Moving a handful of moonlight, the owl's wing. Do you see how it was just the reverse order there? All right. Any volunteers to read the last one? Can I read it before I jump off to assist with another session? Please do, Stephen. Um, which, what's the title of this one? The... Oh, it's Paul Ceylon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Leaping, a fish opens a door in the lake. Amazing, thanks. So, that is such a, thanks for joining Stephen. So this creates such a beautiful image when you hear that leaping, a fish opens a door in the lake, right? Like this is such an interesting way of thinking how a fish jumps back into the water, opening a door in the lake. It's so beautiful and so visually clear, right? So we're going to do a little exercise now before we start writing. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Uh, and we are going to do a little exercise to generate some of our creative juices. So um, this is an ideation exercise, which is um, just a way of saying we're going to generate some ideas. And um, what is called, it's a take on a activity from psychodrama actually called um, dramatic excuse me, dramatic multiplication. I blanked there for a second. So dramatic multiplication is just this idea. We're gonna be building on top of each other. And the way that I'm gonna do it, we're gonna simplify it down and we're just going to get into breakout rooms and we're gonna to respond to each other based on some ideas. So for example, I want each person to pick an object around them. So I'm gonna pick a cup, right? I'm choosing this guy right here. Um, and this is just to generate ideas. So you don't need to write about a cup or whatever object you choose, right? You can write about whatever you like when we start writing, but I just want you to generate some ideas. So once I'm in a breakout room, I'll have my object, right? And I'll share with the other person. I'm gonna say cup, and then they're gonna say back to me an, a word that comes to mind, and then I'll go again. And we're gonna go back and forth like that for a minute, and then you'll switch and the other person will have a turn. So the idea will be to generate ideas around an object. 
but I want you to focus in on being um, descriptive if you can. So if I were to say notebook, the next obvious thing you might think of would be pen or pencil, right? But I want you to instead try to think of words that might describe a notebook, okay? So you're not just listing off a bunch of objects, you're kind of get, digging deeper into what makes that object what it is and kind of thinking about describing it, etc. So I'm gonna have um, Jamie volunteer here. Jamie's my wonderful cover artist who designed my book. So everyone clap for Jamie. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jamie yeah. um, is gonna just be my volunteer at the moment and do um, a little example. So I'm, if I were to say cup, Jamie might say thirst. And I could say quench. Right. And then she would keep going. Right. So and we would just go back and forth like this. So we're going to just get some ideas flowing and think about also interesting descriptive words and things that we can use when we're thinking about writing. So I'm going to put us into breakout rooms now. And we are going to give it a try with each other. So. Um, I'm actually going to ask you, Jamie, not to click on your breakout room thing, okay? So, Eileen and Annie, you've been invited to join. Okay. Hi. Okay, we can still play, but, but since Stephen had to go and since um, Kathy, I think it, it looks like Kathy had to jump off too. So there were less people to, to participate. So you're in my breakout room. Okay, no problem. And Maurice here is our tech guy, but he's not um, participating. Okay. No problem, so we can <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah, we can totally do it. I, is there an object that you have in front of you or near you? And, it can be also, I know you have a lot of plants and things, so it could definitely be yeah, something like that. That's true. Um, let's see. I mean, there's a um, meditation bowl, a candle, um, chimes, a uh, kitty. Ooh, chimes could be a good one, or cat. It's your choice. Let's do chimes. Okay. Okay. Clink. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes hard to think yeah it's okay oh we have marcy is back with us uh okay. marcy are you there can you hear me i'm gonna see if she feels comfortable on sorry her. yeah my my zoom kicked out it happened yesterday when i was reading <laughs> oh i'm so sorry well i'm glad you're here i'm gonna um you can you can participate with us and we're just doing a little activity. Um, it's a take on dramatic multiplication, which is kind of a psychodrama activity, but um, it's simplified and it's probably you've seen it on maybe TV shows or something. But when I say one word, I'm going to ask someone else, Jamie or you to say a word that comes to mind. So the example that we gave in the session was um, cup. And Jamie said, thirst. And I said, quench. So we are, we're just trying to generate some creative juices and ideas. And, but the goal is to be descriptive as possible. So uh, we don't just want to list off a bunch of different objects like notebook or pen, et cetera. We're going to try to really uh, dig deep and think of some interesting descriptives. Does that sound okay to you? Yep. Cool. So Jamie, uh, told us chimes that was the object she chose and in her surroundings and I said clink and she paused and <laughs> yeah <laughs> so if you have something you'd like to throw in go ahead bamboo hmm. tunnel Protection. Uh, 
Oh, don't worry, Marcy. <laughs> she said in the chat, her dog is snoring. I can't hear it. Just do, you have any, do you have anything else you want to add, Marcy? Uh, protection's a loaded uh, word. <laughs> Sorry, that was just the first thing that came to mind when she said funnel. I know. Well, I just thought I thought of those skinny, those narrow, narrow bamboo cylinders, you know, of yeah. like the chimes. So I just thought of like this little teeny tunnel. Yeah, I'll say border. Hmm. Say a river. Reflection. Well, so I'm gonna kick us off to, Mar uh, to Marcy now and see if she wants to start us off with an object. Does that feel like you got generated some interesting stuff there, Jamie? Sure, I can try, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy, is there an object around you that you'd like to start us off with? Sure. Cow skull. Can it oh. be hyphenated like that? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> Cow skull. Desert. Dry. Is it back Crack. to me? Oh, yes. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I jumped in. I stole your turn. It's it's you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm from the desert, so I could listen to people talk about it all day. Mm. <laughs> Yours was dry? Yeah. And Katie, what you said something after? I said cracked. Cracked. Puzzle. Mm -hmm. Lost. Searching. Silent. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to close the room so the others will join us here in a second. Silent. I thought of the cactus when you said silent. I don't know why. Still. Spiny. Protection. Look at that came all the way back around. <laughs> Border. Yeah. Full and I circle. Could be thirsty the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> thirsty. Yeah. So we'll see what when everyone comes back in what they came up with as well, and hopefully this kind of gets us just thinking about some ways, different ways we might um, pull nature together and what we want to think about because we want to try to capture not only a scene but a welcome back was your session generative oh yeah, yeah. okay Go ahead. <laughs> what did you think I, I need the definition of generative did you produce a lot did you feel like you were i'll generate like in, yep. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, absolutely did. What objects did you start with? I started with the beautiful Erte that I'm looking at behind Annie's shoulder. Oh, wow. very good. And Annie, what did you start with? An Amazon fire stick. What was the most interesting word that came out of your exchange? Well, I just realized that I was totally clueless because I thought she was talking of a ritual fire stick <laughs> and, the modern, and the modern, I didn't realize that it's actually called a fire stick. <laughs> oh, okay. That's amazing. So we're having a totally, you probably thought I was nuts. <laughs> no, I think one of the strongest words, no pun intended, was the, the power. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting how like we ended up circling back to um, ours kind of went full circle because we started talking about chimes and then bamboo and then we got to talking about the desert and anyways we kind of ended up 
connecting the dots a little bit with the, the words that we came up with. And even those chimes and desert don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. Uh, we ended up producing the same word in that in that uh, generative process. So um, that's great. So we're going to use this activity as sort of inspiration for some writing time. So I've blocked out a little bit of time for us to write, and I'm going to share the screen just to throw up those um, prompts again, the, the, the rules again, if you will. I don't like that word, but um, we're going to just suggestions. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, but one technique I want to share that we're going to, this is kind of the prompt. So one technique the is of narrowing focus. So um, this example that we have up here, the whole sky in a wide field of flowers, one tulip. So we're kind of taking this something very vast and bringing it into focus. And so I'd like you to try using this technique if you'd like. Again, a prompt is just a suggestion. So if you feel pulled to go in another direction and you want to write about, you don't want to use this technique and you already have an idea of what you want to write, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so we're going to kind of use our, our ideation exercise as inspiration for uh, some writing. So I'm just put some questions up here, which is like a little checklist for us. And I'm gonna give about um, 10 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer if we have time to just doing some writing. So if you have a piece of paper and a pen or pencil near you, um, grab that or you can use your computer, of course, and pull up a Word document or something. And um, let's, let's write a haiku. Any questions or reservations uh, from the group? No. Everyone feels confident in taking on this activity. We can choose, okay. Sorry, one quick question. We can choose 575 or not follow the traditional, right? Well, I'd encourage you not to, but you, if again, if you would like to, sometimes that structure feels helpful. So um, if you really want to follow the 575, go for it, but um, then have a look through after you write it to see if there's anything in there that can be taken out because you are trying to fill just the syllable count. You just, do you know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. So either way, it's up to you, but um, try to to weed out any words that uh, don't need to be there, especially if they're little things like articles or pronouns or things like that, that um, maybe aren't necessary. So I'm going to actually put on some music for you all while we write.
hear the music or is it too soft? Is it good? Okay. Just a few more minutes.
Okay, so I'd like you to wrap up whatever it is that you're working on. So I'll give you another minute or so to do that if you need it. Maybe you wrote a couple haikus. And I'd encourage you to turn your microphones back on because we are going to share if you feel comfortable. If you don't want to, that's perfectly okay. Um, no pressure at all. But if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to share what you wrote. I wrote a couple as well, so I'll share also. Um, and we can uh, give each other a little round of applause after each um, reading. So you can use the reactions below. I like to do a little bit of like jazz hands um, just to give a little bit of applause via Zoom. So uh, if there's anyone who'd like to go first, uh, by all means. Yeah, Eileen? I, I can make this short and sweet. Okay. I, know I, do, I do not wish to share. Haikus okay. are hard. They are. Um, and my computer wouldn't even let me not do capitals. Well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll keep working on it in the future. Yep. Good. Well, I'm glad that you joined us. Um, is there anyone else who would like to, to share or comment? Maybe if you don't want to share exactly what you wrote, you're also welcome to share the idea that you were playing with. So you can talk about that. Uh, and Eileen, you're welcome to do that too, if you'd like. Uh, if you want to share whatever... Um, thought came to your mind as you were as you were writing any volunteers I, I can share okay okay so I kind of I just you know worked with the the words that we kind of came up with in mm -hmm. our thing we we'll played off of that a little bit so a shielding tunnel borders reflections dancing upstream mm, I love that dancing upstream Let's give Jamie a little bit of love here. <laughs> um, I like that you played with those words that we use. That's great. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I mean, I think that that was helpful because on the, I don't work well on the spot, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, so that mm -hmm. was that really like kind of helped bring up some stuff. So it was great. Good. Yeah, it's, it, this is such a quick workshop and writing often takes like, a lot of reflection and uh, so it can take some time to drop into that headspace where you're like, oh, there, I have an idea. Um, so I can do mine. Um, actually, it's funny because I was like, ordinarily I'd walk away from it and come back and walk away and come back and see oh, it. Nice. But also because you write so beautifully, I was going to get your input. Okay. Um, 
a flowing creek, elegant white egret walking gingerly, or gingerly walking, or not walking at all. I like gingerly walking. Gingerly walking, yeah. yeah. So that's beautiful. Well done. And you did the two, you did the the two different parts. One connect, like the two lines connected, and the one on its own. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, because I was in class, um, I guess last semester, and he was doing the the five seven five, which was I had to look up every word. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, the, the 575, yeah, it can be tedious or it can be helpful. It really depends. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just like to say, forget about it. But um, some people prefer it. So to each their own, it's quite all right. It's good to have options. So yeah. um, to have both of them and have it still be a haiku. Yeah, and actually... To Jamie's point about thinking on the spot, sometimes the 575 rule can be helpful in the moment if you're kind of struggling to see where it goes because it requires that you think of words that are, it requires sort of that you think of more words because you're trying to fit that syllable count. So it forces you to kind of maybe go someplace that you might not have gone with the poem and then you can always go back to it and weed out what might not fit. Yeah, I agree with you. So, Marcy, are you keen to share? Or would you rather not? Sure, I can share. Okay. I have two. Okay. The first one is on a packed train, sitting still as lotuses, our fingers touch. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. And the second one. Yes, sorry. Oh, we forgot to give this <laughs> to Annie as well. No Annie, worries. you need yeah. some praise Extra. there. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Marcy, your second one. It's inspired by the moon has been amazing in Chicago lately. So mm. um, moon caught in tree as if fish in nylon nets, light escapes everywhere. Mm, beautiful. Moon like caught net. in tree. Yeah, I like the the nylon nets there. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much. I, I can read mine too if if um yes. we have a little bit of time. I'll so I wrote two and I ended up using the mug that I had originally um, <laughs> said. Uh, so that one is coffee's lusty bedfellow, the silky cream in my morning mug. So that was that. The first one and then the other one's a little bit more um centered around nature so a hot wind mother earth having the last word so those were the two that i came up with was as you all were writing um and i'd like to leave some time for i'm we gonna end with a reading i was gonna read two poems to you all and then i did want to open it up to um, if you had any questions or if you wanted to chat a little bit about the haikus that you did so maybe i'll leave a few minutes for that now and then um, i'll jump into a reading so if there's any questions or uh, any comments about any of the haikus that you read or shared if you have some positive feedback to share about anything you heard or anything that um, came up for you in the workshop I'd be happy to leave space for that right now I love when we do them or we hear them that you can put so much information and visual impact into a few words, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially because I'm always like yakking. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's so well said. And one thing I might not have mentioned and I meant to is that when you write a haiku, one of the amazing things about it is that it can describe a scene, but also a state of mind. So it has kind of this dual purpose. Um, so that's one of the beautiful things about uh, haiku, in my opinion. It's so simple, uh, and it, because it is so focused on nature in the present moment, it can really capture a, a beautiful image, but also describe a feeling or a state of mind or something like that. So um, that's something to keep, keep in mind if you continue to, 
to write haiku. Okay, great. Well, if there's no other questions or anything about the workshop, I'll just close us out with, um, with a reading. And this is from um, my chat book, which is a small collection of poems that will be um, coming out soon. Um, as I introduced Jamie in the beginning, she is my cover artist and designed the beautiful cover for me and is printing and binding all of the books. And I actually have um, mm -hmm. a link that I'll share with you guys afterwards. Um, I'm giving all of my workshop participants this weekend 20% off if you'd like to pre-order. So I'll share that link with you as well. And um, it should be finished in the next few weeks. So yeah. um, it, <laughs> it's, all, it's all happening by hand. So that's just a little disclaimer that we're, you know, in the process still, but it's exciting. And um, I don't know if you want to say anything about it, Jamie. But. Oh, I, can, I can just say really quickly, I mean, I've really enjoyed working on this process with Katie. It's been really fun. And I've, I'm actually, you know, not so good with the writing. I've played around a little bit, but more kind of in, in the visual and, and I'm doing all the hand printing, uh, silk screen, letterpress and hand binding. So it's been nice to be able to take things that I've worked with for years and be able to combine it with, with Katie's work. Cause I think your writing is really lovely and profound. So it's, yeah, it's great. And I'm excited for this to come out and be in fruition. And if, if, uh, Jamie's cool with it. I'll also share her website too, so you guys can check out her other work. Or um, so Needs I'll share. Updating, so <laughs> judging. <but. laughs> um, I'll share all of that at the end. And but I'd like to start. And I know we are all very tired of the pandemic, but this is a poem that I wrote um, about coronavirus back in April <laughs> of last year, and it's called upon being inundated with news about the coronavirus. I think first of my father in the 1990s, left hand out the window of his tan pickup, cigarette between his fingers, and the over 65 like him. His lungs already given to fits of coughing, persistent in their efforts to expel chemicals long abandoned. Meanwhile, birds squawk in the avocado tree out back, and I wonder what bats sound like if we could hear at that decibel. That's what I hear so much of lately, people talking about bats. Just the other day, well, 11 days ago, I watched Contagion of All Movies with my brother Jack, who has asthma, and you guessed it, it all came down to a bat. My solution indoors is to drink broth and hope for immunity. When I was little, it was my dad who made us soup when we were sick. And did you know that a group of bats is called a cauldron, as if all this time they've been cooking up potions? Just the other day, well, five months ago, say late October, early November, I sat at Amy's dining table in Chiang Mai, eating a bowl of Twee's famous noodle soup the national anthem pushing past the warm breeze through the slatted windows from the speakers at the park across the street. Men and women halted from the swaying of outdoor exercise equipment, the ones that make you feel discombobulated afterward. Then say late November, I was next door at Kunla's house, barefoot, plate full of sticky rice, papaya salad, morning glory earlier, maybe a week, and again later, every few days, Twee and I on the motorcycle to buy coconuts. Not too much longer, call it early December, the air finally cool, I wandered across the bridge through the night market for the last time. And today, say April 2nd, who knows anymore, I stared out the window dreaming of Chiang Mai, not Los Angeles. So consider this a love letter to Thailand, by that, I mean, consider this a love letter to the world. Now, in this exact moment, I hear the birds squawk again, and I consider whether I have the ingredients in my kitchen for some version of Twee's noodle soup that I can make for my father. Thank you, Annie, for the... 
<laughs> jazz hands. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's actually one of my favorites from the collection. Um, and it was inspired by a poem of John Murillo's actually, which is in, called Upon, Be Upon Reading That Eric Dolphy Transcribed Even the Calls of Certain Types of Birds. So if you're curious to look up John Murillo, check that, that, that poem out. Um, and then I'll read, I'll read one more, um, as I think we have time, and then uh, close us out here if there's any questions, and I'll share some info with all of you. So this one is called Poems and Black Holes, which is actually also the title of the book. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of the book was inspired by kind of this um, well, my fascination with outer space, which is sort of funny, and I was really taken with this idea of dark matter and dark energy and the fact that the universe is expanding, and um, it felt to me like a really interesting metaphor for the fact that there's so much subconsciously that that controls our lives and yet we have this dark energy that we can't study and scientists don't know exactly how it works and the universe is expanding but it's influencing our lives on a day-to-day -day level we just don't know how and so I thought that was a really beautiful metaphor to think about as I was writing some of this so this is called poems and black holes a poem is an infinite tunnel a channel a black hole I begin and am tempted at first to put my pen down. Then I meet the event horizon, the moment of no return, what I can only presume to be the inexplicable workings of dark matter or dark energy or God, as if by accident, squeezing, pulling, plunging electric, I am completely still. I find it the most inspiring and tedious form of worship or sorcery, or both. The rest is just ordinary matter. That's great. Thank you all for listening. Um, I'm um, sorry, you know what, can you read it again? I, I never, like, like the first time it's like you're trying to pay, pay attention the next time you want to get into like- the Sure, do you want me to read it? both of them again or just the one? Um, whatever you feel like. <laughs> I'm happy to do either. What would you prefer? Which one would you like to hear? Both. I have I have something cooking in the oven, so I'm going to sign off and say thank you so very, very much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Eileen, for coming. I really appreciated you being here and Good luck, participating. Jamie, Katie, on your thank endeavor. You. Good success yes. wishes for you. Yes, and you. just so you know, Eileen, if you want the discount code, it's BOCA21. So if you look up my name on my website, which is just www.catherinezahn.com, if you're interested, the, the book will be 20% off for you guys for the next week. So Thank that's you. the code if you'd like it. Have a great evening. I can, I, I can remember that. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so I'll, I'll happily read, um, read this again. Um, Annie, poems and black holes or, or the other one? Yeah, poems and black holes, please. Okay, sure. So poems and black holes. A poem is an infinite tunnel, a channel, a black hole. I begin and am tempted at first to put my pen down. Then I meet the event horizon, the moment of no return what I can only presume to be the inexplicable workings of dark matter or dark energy or God, as if by accident, squeezing, pulling, plunging electric, I am completely still. I find it the most inspiring and tedious form of worship or sorcery or both. The rest is just ordinary matter. That's excellent. Thank you all so much for coming to the workshop. Let me drop in in the chat. I'll put um, Jamie's name so you can check her out. And I will also put in um, my website information where you can um, buy the book if you're interested. It's pre-order right now. So um, there's the link there and the code for 
20% off for coming to the workshop is Boca 21. So, oh, I think I accidentally put that all in a private message to Maurice, our tech guy. So let me drop it back in the chat <laughs> for everybody. Uh, there's Jamie's name. And here is the link there. And the code is Boca 21. Um, if there's any questions or comments, I'm happy to, we have a few more minutes still, so um, we can always close out early or we can have a little conversation. If you've got to run, no pressure at all, um, feel free to hop off. But I just want to say thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure talking with all of you. It was so fun to have this workshop with you. Thanks for participating.